Well, um, Dynamite got 680,000 last night. Not good. I mean, they're up against... <laughs> they're up against basketball. They're up against hockey, but... Um, that probably made the difference. So, you know, if you were to offset for basketball and hockey, then you're probably looking at, you know, 730000 you know. So, if like, I'll, I'd be like, I could be generous and say, like, okay, yeah, you know, the real number is probably 730000 which is about the, what they've been averaging. So, that makes sense. They lost about 50,000, 60,000 people uh, due to basketball and hockey um not surprised now myself having youtube tv and a lot of people having you know the way things are nowadays everybody's be able to watch two things you know you don't have to just watch one thing i mean i had the celtics game on my phone for for time being i had uh the the bruins hockey game on my youtube tv and on my other youtube tv was aw dynamite so i was watching all three things so you know i know that it's not fully 100 percent yet that, oh, this was on, so it still has an impact when something's on, because some people don't want to multi multitask, and some people are only focusing on their time on one, or the living room TV is on one thing, but there are a lot of people that are putting on multiple things nowadays, you know? Um, something has to be super important to me, or really cool uh, for me to tune into it uh, singly, singly, uh, singularly, singularly, I, I can't say the word, I don't know, who cares, I failed school, but, um, you know, it has to be that good for me to tune into it. And you could say that, hey, aren't the Bruins that good? You love hockey. Hockey your favorite thing. And, um, yeah, that's true. That's a good point, you know. Um, however, later on in the second hour, I tuned out for a while and I watched hockey on the big screen all by itself because that was the most important thing to me. So, but I tuned into everything off and on last night throughout. So I wonder how many people are doing that, how trends are with people multitasking and all of us having shorter attention spans over the time. Now, I said what I said last night as far as the whole Tony Khan thing, and, I mean, we could do hours on what they did last night. I mean, I bounced back and forth, but it was very goofy. You know, like, Eric, people like Eric Bischoff are just burying it to death. Then there's people like Brian Alvarez who said it was good. Uh, I mean, I'm somewhere in the middle, uh, leaning more towards the negative, negative. Um, because it was too late, it was too silly. I mean, Tony Khan today had a neck brace on, but they carried him out of the ring last night. He or he like got up on his own and walked out of the ring with help. Why didn't they do a stretcher? Why didn't they put him in a stretcher like he broke his neck? I mean, dude was tombstoned. You know, I just don't think last night worked. It didn't shock me. And and you know, it's funny. I was getting shit on on Twitter today. People, I was saying like, um, I said, you know, when I was fourteen and Stone Cold attacked Vincent Mann, I was like. I was like, damn, is this real? Like, this is almost real. Like, is this really happening? Like, what's going on? This isn't supposed to happen. You know, and then people were like, oh, wow, in 27 years you grew up. But that's not what it is. Sometimes even nowadays when things happen, you go, oh, my God, that, this almost seems like legit. Like, what are they doing? Like, we just saw it with The Rock at WrestleMania. During that whole run, there were times where you were like, wow. Like, they're really, like, making it seem very real. Um, and it felt that way, even though it's not right? Um, this did not feel, it didn't feel real that, you know, Tony sold weird when he got hit in the, in the chest. Um, you know, uh, he took a Meltzer drive, whatever they call it, the Tony Khan driver, whatever the thing is. And then he gets up under his own power and leaves the ring. I mean, the best thing last night, everyone's talking about it. And I knew they would. And I said they would last night when it happened was Tony Khan's dad. Tony Khan's dad has the visuals of a star. If that's unless unless they unless someone said that hey hey Tony's really actually hurt in the ring and something's wrong, can you go out and check on him? You know, and th that would be believable then why he looked serious cuz he looked like something really happened. He looked like he was like really concerned. Tony Khan's father has amazing visual. Do put that guy on TV now. Put that guy on TV like right now. Because that was the best thing about last night. Because he, he had the look on his face like it was real. Like when I looked at Tony, it's, it's, this is how important looks are in storytelling. People don't understand this. Dude, this is how important looks are. I looked at Tony Khan's father and I, that's where I, I was like, oh my God, his son was attacked. You know? But when I saw Tony Khan get attacked, I just laughed. And then, you know, the, and now he's wearing a neck brace and I'm laughing. Like, and I, I don't think Tony Khan... It would almost be better if, 
you know, Tony was doing the Vince McMahon, like, you screwed you, because, like, he, I don't know, he's just seen so negatively right now. He's seen in a negative light. So what are we, we're supposed to have sympathy for Tony Khan and then hate the, 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 the elite? But people have negativity towards all of them right now. So they're trying to steer us in the direction of, you know, Tony's the good guy, owner, sweetheart guy, and the mean elite bad EVP guys attacked him. But I don't know. I almost think they all have to be together. They've all got to be bad. And it's very similar of the WCW Eric Bischoff thing from 96 or, or, or so, or whatever year it was. Um, there's so many parallels to this and so many things. Um, so that was a major thing. So the ratings are out. There you have it. And um, But do the ratings even really matter with most people? Because most people, like I said, are going to go to the whole... Well, the playoffs were last night and basketball and hockey. So, But, but again, to offset that... All things being equal, it's probably around, was around, and I missed it. Think about that. I wasn't even watching live when that happened. I had to go back and watch at 1020 once the playoff games were over because Jake told me, no, no, dude, you got to tune back in. You didn't see what happened at the end. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, they attacked Tony Khan. I'm like, what? And I was like, I've been dying to see that. You know, this guy that said he wouldn't be on the on screen and all these things, and he obviously shouldn't be, but like, I'm like, well, I've got to take a look at that. And so I did. And I saw what I saw. <laughs> I saw Tony Khan's father being hilariously awesome. And, you know, the Swerve Strickland thing pisses me off, too. And I told you all about that and why it doesn't make any sense. Swerve Strickland opens up, doesn't open the show, but he comes out and he has a match, a long match, in which it was hard to win that long match. It was hard to win the long match. After he just won the title on Sunday, and he has a match against a pretty much nobody who lost his last match. It makes no fucking sense. And I just got demonetized for that. But you know what? It makes no goddamn sense. And then I guess Tony Khan was hot and said that a lot of people saying that have ill intent or something like that. And that's crazy. It's not ill intent. It's it's literally just doesn't. It's not the right fucking thing to do. That's whatever we, you know. Um, so now he's coming out Friday for a celebration, but like, it doesn't need to have a celebration. But like, Willow had a celebration, so I like, I don't get it. First of all, you don't need a celebration. You don't have to announce a celebration. Just have the guy come out with the belt, cut a promo, um, maybe set up the match Friday. Ever think of that? Maybe have a guy come out and, and, you know, whatever. And he goes, all right, it's already begun, man. People are already attacking me. I know what it is. I knew what I signed up for. You know, when I won this championship, now I'm making more money than everybody. There's all kinds of jealousy. I get it, man. So I say bring it on. You know, you got a problem with me. Um, You know, they told me I didn't have to defend this thing for at least a couple of weeks or whatever it was until the next pay-per-view or whatever. So whatever you got to say. But you know what? How about this? Friday night, if you can beat me, you know, then you can become the the first contender or whatever the heck you want to do. Whatever you want to do. But make it make sense and then make it lead into it. And that may not have been the greatest thing ever. And that may be a very safe kind of predictable booking. But at least there's something to it. What they did the other night was just like, what? What? I don't know. That's the way I feel. Um... Anyway, leave me comments down below. Leave a super thanks. Um, That's about it, man. Remember, out of nowhere, next week, we'll be live from the Patreon on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. And um, we may be live from the members section as well on YouTube. So if you're a member or a patron, either way, you'll get it. All right, guys, I'll talk to you guys later.